This is Las Vegas Real Estate Now with local real estate expert Harvey Blankfeld. Where we want to educate you about our market, empower you to make wise decisions, and help you engage with our expert contributors. The, the, thing, that, the thing that I think is interesting about this, though, it's that kind of inventory would, would reflect that it's a, a strong seller's market. and that, But prices, while they're going up, they're not going crazy. They're not, you're not seeing them go, go nuts. And while the median price has gone up, I think it's ma- that's mainly uh, a, a function of the product mix. In other words, a lot more really expensive homes are selling right now than, than homes at the bottom of the, of, the, of the ladder, I'll say. In light of that, um, it's a, it is a challenge for buyers right now. But buyers are still getting homes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've you know we've been working with a few buyers recently. We got them all homes. You have to be competitive though, don't you? You have to go in and you know, you're not gonna if the if the house is priced right, you're gonna give the seller their price. You're not gonna be able to knock them off their number too easily right now. Is that what you're saying? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> especially if they just come on the market. You know, if they just come on the market and you write low, you might be surprised you're gonna be competing. <clears throat> we've seen that you're competing if you write right when the home comes on the market. Yeah, yeah, and, and and honestly, if it's if it's priced right and it just comes on the market, it's not going to be around long. I mean, that's that's the thing we're seeing, is that you you know you just saw 873 homes uh, uh, close last week, uh, 854 went into escrow. That, those are big numbers for us. Those are, in terms of single family homes, those are really good numbers. Uh, those are like summertime numbers, and we're we're coming. We're, we're school started already. Maybe that's why because we didn't really get to have our summer burst, our summer bubble with everything going on with COVID. And now people are realizing, I need somewhere to live. I And the, everything's right. The interest rates are low. Pricing is good. Let's buy a house. I think everyone was waiting. I, they were exactly. waiting, waiting, waiting. And then here we are where, you know, we generally start to flatline around October. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we, we're still pretty busy. I think we're very lucky that we're busy throughout the year. And then it picks up come February. But Interestingly enough, it seems like everyone's maybe we're playing catch up a little bit. It's going to be a busy last quarter. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think there is a lot of pent up demand. Like you said, there's a lot of people out there who were sitting on the sidelines wondering what was going to happen and worried about where things were. And it's interesting also to me that uh, in my in my history in real estate, I've noticed that in, in the years of a presidential election, when we get to the fall, things really slow down. People pull back, but not this year because of COVID and because of the uh, pent up demand. I think we're seeing uh, activity get, you know, get even stronger than it normally would be, which is great. Danielle said to me, "Gee, Harp, I want to start talking about communities in Las Vegas, so that we can start sharing our, our information about that with our listeners and the followers." Um, and you want to talk about, um, uh, let's see, Las Vegas Country Club today? Tell us, tell us a little bit about Las Vegas Country Club. Well, it's historical. Mm-hmm. It's an iconic, guard gated community. And I was there showing property in the last couple of days, and I just think it's, you don't feel like you're in Vegas. And there's grass. Big trees. Huge. You, you really, you're in the middle of the city. You're minutes away from the strip and yeah. the airport. Yeah. And you just don't feel like you're in Las Vegas. And, and, and it's a beautiful golf course there. And uh, private. private. Private golf course. Private golf course. Absolutely spectacular. Um, and you remember the, the, the movie uh, Casino? Casino. Casino. Mm-hmm. You know, that when that airplane landed on the fair, that's, that's where they did it. At that first hole uh, on that golf course right there, and then I, I watch. I'm, every time that movie comes on, I watch it. I can't. I mean, if it comes on on the cable channel, I'm. Wa- I gotta watch it. It's a classic. I mean, there's so many good classic moments in that movie. Um, okay, so Las Vegas Country Club is it? I mean, in price wise, would you say Las Vegas Country Club is is similar to some of the country clubs out on the west end or the edge of the valley? How are their prices in there for the houses in, in Las Vegas Country Club? Well, I don't think that. I don't think that golf course or that country club is anything like any of the other ones in Vegas. Mm-hmm. They have such a diverse mix of homes, anything from condos to brownstones to Some. townhouses, single family up to custom. Right. So it just has such a eclectic mix. I don't know if eclectic is the right, right word, but yeah, a big variety. Huge. And, and um, you know, I, I know I've sold a few of the uh, condos in there. And um, they were very reasonably priced. I mean, they weren't... They about 130000 Yeah, I mean, very reasonably... two-bedroom. Reason- yeah, very reasonably priced. And then you're living... I mean, you could walk to the Strip. That, I was just going to ask, like, I, I'm familiar with it. Where is that located? Where is that? You're on... Um, jo- Desert Inn. Yeah. Joe yeah. W. Brown. Right. And then it kind of winds right. through behind Turnberry and... Right. 
right behind where the street. old Hilton was, and now it's the, the Westgate. Westgate. Okay. Westgate. And it's right behind there. Right okay. behind there. Awesome. Yeah. Good location. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Very convenient. Right. Very convenient. Especially if you want to go downtown. Yeah. It's I mean, if you're if, from downtown too. Yeah. If it's a second home, great. You know, if you're a golfer, even better. I want to share a, a story about a listing I had recently. Danielle, we got the. Um, from the buyer within a diligence time frame, but it was kind of late. It was like we, we had, they had 10 days with which to do their inspection. And on the eighth day, they sent us a request for repairs, which is one of the forms we use. They sent us a request for repairs. And in the request for repairs, they said, quote unquote, fix everything. And then they sent us a copy of the inspection report. Now, <laughs> the inspection report, if, you, if you've ever had a home inspection, uh, you know, inspectors, it's their job to find stuff. That's what they want to do. Not, you know, not that it's not legitimate. It is. But in this inspection report, there's all kinds of things, you know, that, that really, you know, in a home, in this case, the home was 16 years old. It's not necessarily that the seller would plan on fixing everything. And quite honestly, as a buyer, I hope the buyer would understand that this is not a brand new home. And yet that's how they wrote their request. Now, we don't know if it was if, if it was the buyer's thoughts and the uh, buyer's agent agreed, so, oh yeah, let's get them to fix everything. Or if the buyer insisted it be this way, or if the, or if the buyer's agent suggested it be, we don't care. But here's what we, my seller said to me: said, "Harvey, listen, I don't want to. I'm not going to. I don't want to fix everything here. Really, am I, I? I'm not selling a brand new home. What should we do? So here's the seller's equation. The seller's equation goes like this: Do I want to agree to this and just proceed and spend the money necessary to get everything fixed on this list, or?" Do I want to go back and say to the buyer, listen, I'm willing to fix these six items, but I'm sorry, I'm not fixing the rest. Or do I just want to give the buyer a credit towards their closing costs that they can use later on to fix all those things themselves? Or do I want to tell the buyer, I'm not fixing anything. You saw this stuff when you saw the house and there's no surprises here. Um, sorry, you're, you're not happy with the condition of the home, but I'm selling it as is and, that, and I'm done. Those are the choices the seller has amongst a few others, but those are the main choices. Uh, my seller said to me, listen, Harvey, I'm willing to fix these three things, and that's it. And so we sent the, the reply back to the buyer and and said, hey, we're willing to fix these three things. That's when I found out, in fact, that it was kind of the buyer's agent's idea. The buyer's agent, what do you mean you're not going to fix everything? <laughs> Didn't understand why we wouldn't be willing to fix everything. Um, so ultimately, the, the, um, the buyer's agent and the buyer consulted, and uh, they didn't agree. They, they were not happy. They weren't it was like, you know what? Um, if you're not willing to fix everything, we don't want to buy the house. And so now it kick, goes back to us. Do we, what do we want to do? You know, as a seller, are you prepared to lose this buyer over this list of items? And we're doing math again, and we're trying to figure it out. And at this point, because of this market, because of the speed with which we sold the home, the fact that we ha we know we have other buyers very interested, we, we told the buyer to go away. We, we basically said, no, we're canceling the transaction. Thanks for trying. Well, interestingly enough, then the buyer changed their mind. Harder. They changed their mind. Say, okay, you know what? Those three things are fine. And and look, and I understand. Look, we, this is what we right. This is what we do, Danielle. We negotiate. Yeah. We negotiate. We see this all the time. To me, it just sounds like another reason why this is why you need real estate agents. You have somebody yeah. to come fight in. Like, because if not, if you just get a request for repairs, like a lot of people, what is this? Fix everything? I don't know what that means. Yeah. This is why you have great re representation. Yeah. Experience. Experience. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Experience. Because we need to have our pulse on the market in yeah. order to best advise. Because yeah. if you didn't realize it was a seller-driven market right now, yeah. yep. it, if there was a ton of inventory and not COVID, they could potentially ask for the, all those repairs. Yeah. In other markets, that might happen for you. And I and I, I got the... Uh, not, and I'm not telling you who the other agent was, and I'm not trying to disparage the other agent. I just think that they were inexperienced. They thought this is the way you're supposed to do things. Hey, let's just ask for everything. You ask it and you get it. Yeah, and then the seller would fix it and let's move on. No, that's not the way it works, guys. I mean, and not in our market. It might not work today. in other markets. It might work in other markets. I mean, I've watched the TV shows. I've seen the agents <laughs> negotiate. I've seen that stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, that's I want indicative of what we do. Every I day. want <laughs> everything in this house fixed, yes. and I wanted, and then I want you to paint that room a different color, and then I want blah blah blah. This is not the way things happen here in Vegas, guys. I'm sorry. Please join us again next week as we keep you up to date on everything real estate here in Southern Nevada. Remember, send me any questions or ideas for next week's broadcast. Tune in every Thursday at 3. Also, please let your friends and family know to like our Facebook page and be reminded about our updates at LV Real Estate Radio. We'll catch you next week. Thanks again for joining us.